If I asked you to tell me the additive inverse of the number 9, what would you say? Well, it would be negative 9, because if you add them together, you get a 0. Or what's the additive inverse of negative 16? It would be positive 16, because if you add them together, you get a 0. Well, if we have a matrix A, this is a 2 by 2 matrix, but it works for any matrix, then negative A is called the additive inverse of the matrix A. And for this example, it would be, negative A would be simply taking the negative or opposite of each one of the four numbers in this matrix. So it would be a 0 and a positive 1, and then a negative 2, negative 3 in the second row. Okay, so once again, every matrix has an additive inverse. You simply negate all of the elements in the matrix. <clears throat> well, the M by N zero matrix can be denoted with a zero. If there's, if there's no ambiguity, if you know what size matrix you're talking about, you can just call it big zero. Or you can say zero and you can actually specify the size of it. And it's the zero matrix. Notice that in the, if we go to the above, a plus negative A, I'll put the negative A in parentheses, this matrix plus this matrix gives us what? Well, if you add the corresponding entries, you get a 0, 0, 0, 0. This additive inverse, again, just comes from the same uh, term we use for real numbers. All right, so this is the zero matrix. And maybe to be really specific, I'll go ahead and say a two by two. Because <clears throat> if there were a three by three zero matrix, it's not the same as this zero matrix. It, this, it's, it, this, it depends upon the size. Okay, well there are also, speaking of real numbers a minute ago, uh, there are various properties of real numbers that also hold for matrices. And you can probably figure out how to fill in these blanks. If A and B and C are M by N matrices, so they're all the same size, and zero is the zero matrix of the same size as these, they're all M by N, then A plus B is equal to what? The commutative property of addition. What would that be? Remember, commutative says that 2 plus 3 equals 3 plus 2. The order doesn't matter. Well, same thing for matrices. You can add them in this order, A plus B or B plus A. You're going to get the same result. And then the associated proper, associative property of addition, that's the one where you keep the matrices in the same order, A, B, C, but you regroup them. You put the parentheses, instead of around A, B and B, you put the parentheses around the B plus C. So A plus B plus C in parentheses. And the additive identity, just like with real numbers, you know, 10 plus 0 equals 10. It doesn't change the number, so 0 is called the additive identity for the real numbers. Well, just like this, the 0 matrix is the additive identity for matrices of this size, M by N. So A plus the 0 matrix gives you the matrix A. It doesn't change it at all. And we already looked at this one um, up here, so we already know the answer to this. A plus negative A is equal to the zero matrix. And I don't need to put the M by N. We already defined it to be the M. We know that this zero matrix is the same size as A, B, and C. So this works out perfectly. All right, well, there's one type of multiplication that's very simple it's called scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication, a scalar is just a real number. That's all it is. I'll even put here real number. When you multiply a matrix by a real number, let's see what happens. If C, remember that what this means, a symbol, if C is an element of the real numbers. This just means if C is a real number and A is a matrix, then CA, where you put the number in front of the matrix A, it's a scalar multiple of the matrix A. 
and CA would be equal to, if we were going to write it similar to this, instead of every entry being AIJ, you have to multiply every entry by C, the, this scalar C. So it would be C times AIJ. So all you do is take every element in the matrix A, every one of them, and you multiply it by the number C. <clears throat> okay? Let's do a real simple example. <clears throat> Actually, we'll do some arithmetic expressions. In this case, it's very simple. The numbers, the, what is C in this case? It's the negative 3. So maybe for one of them, I'll write it out like this. I'll rewrite the matrix A. I'm sure you didn't need to do this. So all we need to do is multiply all of these by negative 3. So it looks like negative 12 and 0 on the first row, 9 and negative 15 on the second row, and the third row would be 0, negative 3. So this matrix is negative 3 times this matrix. Now let's do 4B minus 3C. All right, well first, we'd, um, well, let's make an observation before we do this one. When you take a matrix and multiply it by a scalar, is it possible that the size of the matrix is going to change? Absolutely not, because all you're doing is keep it, you're taking A and you're just multiplying the elements by negative 3. Always keeps the same size. So in this case, 4B will be the same size as B. Negative 3C would be the same size as C. Are we able to subtract them? We are because B and C are the same size. They are both 2 by 2 matrices, 2 rows, 2 columns. So I'm going to do a little shortcut on this one. <clears throat> Instead of writing B, I'm just going to write down what 4B is. All I need to do is take this and multiply them all by 4. So it would be a 20 and a 4 on the top row. And then a multiplying by 4 would give negative 8, negative 8. That happens to be 4B. And now, minus 3C, I could keep the minus sign if I wanted to. And then what do I multiply C by? I would only multiply it by 3 because I'm keeping the minus sign. If I wanted to do, a, I, could keep it, I could make this a plus if I wanted to multiply by all of the elements by negative 3. We would get the same thing. In other words, 4B minus 3C is equal to, that little slanted equal sign is just an equals. This is equal to this. So you just do it either way. I'll keep the minus sign and I'm going to multiply C by 3. So 3, negative 3 for the top row, row number 1, and then row number 2, negative 3, 3. All right, well, we're not done. That would be minus 3C. So one more time, this is 4B and this is 3C, and we left the minus sign there because that it's that minus sign right there. So we're going to do a subtraction. 20 minus 3 is 17. 4 minus negative 3 is the same as 4 plus 3, which is 7. Negative 8 minus negative 3 is negative 8 plus 3. That's negative 5. Negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. So this is the result that we were looking for. It is 4B minus 3C where this is B and that's C.